We're not alone. One of them isn't in the manifest. He wasn't on the plane. They've attacked us, sabotaged us, abducted us, murdered us. We're not the only people on this island, and we all know it. We knew that this season was going to be about the others, going to be about our guys versus the other people on the island. They needed something to give us nightmares, and that has become the others. They seem to be a kind of a rebel sect. They are like us, but their survival traits are not necessarily like us. It seems that they're heavily funded, well-organized, hiding some big secret that has ramifications for the whole world. It's getting even more and more cultish feeling. I was hoping you might join me for a walk. That kind of, uh, come with us, you know, get rid of all your possessions, come and join us on our magic island. The place we're taking you to is special. They could possibly have redeeming qualities, or they could just possibly be stark raving mad. It's far more interesting to have morally ambiguous people. Why are we doing this? We knew that we wanted to feature some of the others who, who we had yet to meet. The face of that ultimately being Juliet Elizabeth Mitchell. Juliet's a fertility doctor. She's brought to the island for a specific purpose, to help the women there have babies. There's something cool there. Look who's here. Hey, rehearsal. Look over there. My name is Benjamin Linus. Ben is sort of the commander of the others. On the ground, here, in this place, he's sort of the last word. We sort of envisioned that there would be a number two. What we've discovered is that there's a group of number twos, and the idea that there are people under Ben, and not all of them are terribly happy with his leadership. Ben has been wasting our time. We're looking for someone to remind us that we're here for more important reasons. Alpert is the consigliere to the leader, and as such, plays a very important role in influencing the events of the others' lives. He's sort of the Dick Cheney of the island. That is <laughs> to say, he was kind of in power for Bush Sr., and now he's, instead, he has no aspirations to be the president of the island himself. This is Ethan. He's one of my colleagues. It's a pleasure to meet you. Ethan has been creating a lot of problems for our castaways almost since the day that we arrived by infiltrating us. I've now officially shot more episodes since I died than when I was alive. Very, very happy to be back on the island. Mr. Friendly, MC Ganey. I'm a man of peace. Can we all just get along? Here he was the most fearful figure in the program for so long, but now that he takes off the scary beard and everything, we kind of like him. She says she knows your beard's fake, Tom. Well, thanks for pointing that out, Kate. Now, I didn't know the beard was fake for four episodes, okay? Then I get the script and they said they found my beard in a locker. I said, okay, beautiful. Fits right in. Don't know what's going on. Hope I'm not interrupting. You two arguing over who's your favorite other. There are sort of good guys and bad guys inside the other's community. And we were talking about Alex in that regard. I think that Carl and Alex are sort of rebel others. They go against the other's way of life and teachings. If I get caught, your father's gonna kill me this time. But there are also Ben loyalists. Miss Clue is willing to do anything to protect the secret of the island. She would rather be killed than taken prisoner. Do it, Mikhail! <laughs> Mikhail, AKA Patchy, he is the guy who mans the flame hatch, which is the communications nerve center for the others. This is a hero of mine, of Patchy's, Nadia Kumaneci, the, the famous uh, Romanian gymnast. And he is a loyalist. He is an other's loyalist. There is nothing you could do to me that would make me lead you there. One of the things that we wanted to do in season three was explore some of the other Dharma stations that we referenced. And if people studied the map that was found in the hatch last year. This is a map to a place called the Barracks. The Barracks is sort of the official uh, name. That was the Dharma Initiative's name. But we, as the writers, like to call it New Otherton. And the others call it home. It's quite kind of a place, a place where people retire, raise their families, the schools are good. Action. So once water is added to bicarbonate, we will get our very own volcanic portion. Looks like any kind of mainland neighborhood, except it's actually like nestled in a valley surrounded by mountains on this, you know, um, 
mystical island. You two could have a tropical getaway here. It's a perfect suburban neighborhood where all the houses are painted exactly the same. These beautiful mustard-colored bungalows. There's flowers growing and people having barbecue and someone cutting the lawn and people dressed in cool pastel colors <laughs> with their hair and makeup nicely done. It's, it's a little Stepfordish in a way, like Stepford summer camp, really. There's always something fun going on, whether it's the badminton contest, the horseshoes, the book clubs. We have it all here. OK, everyone into your positions. There's the undertone of something that's not quite right. It's different than, say, your average suburbia in California somewhere. That would happen to be things like surveillance cameras, speakers, and security lights. You wouldn't necessarily see that in your, your own comfortable neighborhood. And that's to give an idea, a very subtle idea, that there's something else going on behind the scenes here. All the places that the others inhabit or the places that they work in have a wonderful sort of science fiction fantasy quality about them. Is this one of their stations, the, the Dharma Initiative? They called it the Hydra. This is our logo for the Hydra station. Uh, it's basically uh, the Hydra, which is a mythological creature with several different heads. And so there's various different types of substations used for experimentation. The Hydra station is basically the zoological station, which we've been alluding to since we saw the polar bear and the pilot. Let's finally go to this place where these animals were. We know that Kate and Sawyer were being kept in polar bear cages. Could I interest you in uh, possibly a fish biscuit? Our experimental island and uh, the cages that were our first six episodes was actually a theme park which had basically just run wild over the last 15 years. The production designers built a couple of cages and we painted a few Dharma logos on the wall and uh, we were ready to go. What is behind me is the exterior of the Hydra facility. When we saw this building, we just loved this kind of blocky 80s style architecture and this state of dilapidation. So it suited the look that we were after perfectly. Everything here is aged, industrial, and a little bit larger and a little bit unusual. So this was like the ideal place to kind of give off that sensation. It's Jack! We're underwater, aren't we? We know that the cage that Jack was kept in was used to bring in maybe sharks and Juliet says dolphins as well. The concrete walls, the tile, the steel floor, the table that Jack is laid upon, and the harness all lend itself to feeling that, that uh, Jack is being held prisoner in a very dark space. <laughs> Open no, the door. I can't, I can't, Jack, I do that, we die. An important conceptual thing to understand is that we're saying that this building behind us is where the operating theater is and also where the cages are. And then another little subsection of this facility is where we have Jack's room and the surveillance room, which is meant to be below sea level. And then it had another complex of buildings off to the side. That's where room 23 was. Here it is! The Dharma Initiative was doing all these experiments on animals. So is that room that Carl was in for humans? Or what kind of animals were they showing those films to? Like, what was really going on there? That's our island! What, you didn't believe me when I told you before? We need a boat. We saw the Hydra Station Island on Russo's map in the first season. I think that's great because then fans can go back and go, hey, that was there from day one. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, we saw the flame station on another map. The flame is really a communication station. Its purpose is to sort of be the conduit between the island and the outside world. I want detailed files on every single passenger. Already working on it. The others have all this information about our castaways, and Mikhail has sort of been kind of collecting it on their behalf. <laughs> The basement for Flame was filled with documents, schematics, diagrams of significant others' installations, including the looking glass, which is really central and pivotal in the finale. The looking glass station controls communications between one world, the world of the island, and the world of the mainland. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. It's a communication station, sort of like the other one, except that it's underwater. It's the station that emits the ping that leads the submarine back. And basically, it's the objective of the two women down there to jam 
all signals coming into the island. Ben doesn't want to get off the island, and he doesn't want anybody else to either. I want to go home. I want to go home, Ben. Please, can't you please just let me go home? No. Juliet's impetus towards getting off the island is, is huge. The most important person in her life has no idea where she is. So she'll do anything to get off the island. Danny! <laughs> Juliet seems to be a sort of instinctive warrior, like she's this ninja genetic researcher. Rather than being cold, I think that Julius just disassociates when it comes to violence or when it comes to doing things that she has a true distaste for. So where she got to be so technically proficient with a gun, <laughs> I would like to know. Where she got to be technically proficient with her incredible right hook, I would also like to know. I'm surprised that people pay any attention to Ben because I think Juliet is the truly frightening character on Lost. And I, I think Juliet always thinks that she's trying to do good. Even if Michael Emerson says that I'm the scariest one. <laughs> I, I have to say he's definitely the scariest one. He's a master of the art and science of psychology. He sets up situations where the results he hopes for are inevitable. We had such a wonderful plan to break you, Jack. I think that any redeeming qualities that Ben might choose to show are only a manipulation to get what he wants to get. But I, I also get to tamper with sympathies, too, because it can be very earnest. I'm sorry. He's not who we thought he was. Clearly, Ben is a guy who wants to lead these people, but I think he really wants to be the leader of the others more for his own self-aggrandizement than anything else, and I think Locke's arrival now is really threatening that. We are not going anywhere, John. You are going to stay behind. Okay. But we now see that Locke does have a special communion with the island, and he has a very mysterious encounter in this cabin with, the, uh, with what may or may not be Jacob. That's enough. You've had your fun. It's all about who can see things on the island. And obviously, you know, some of our people have seen a lot of things, and some of them haven't seen anything. And that Ben is able to see his mother, which makes him so interesting to the others and important, and why they are willing to take him in as one of their own, their leader. Ben always says he's serving a higher purpose. He is willing to do whatever it takes for the good of the many. If any of them are stupid enough to get in your way, kill them. In order for the greater good, we have to have certain characters die. By the time you see this, I will be dead. We killed a lot of others in the finale. Ready, ten, three, two, one, go! There was a lot of house cleaning going on. There's still a group that's moving for the temple, but Friendly is dead, and Isabel is dead, and Price is dead. You pick it obviously died early. Clue is gone. Mikhail is dead. So, you know, in the war of us versus the others, we did pretty well in this sort of final tally. Tie him up. He's coming with us. I think we shouldn't forget the unsung others, the Jasons and the Lukes and all those. They're not just henchmen, is no, what Adam's these, saying. These they guys, have lives, they have wives, they have homes. They have hopes and dreams that are shattered, but. Um, By our people. You know, I think we should just take a moment to. To think I about really them. think there should be a silent moment for the others who we've lost this year. I think the others represent a different perspective, a different dynamic, if you will. I think that the writers have, in such a genius way, planted the question, who is good, who is bad, what is right and what is wrong? They're just fighting for what is theirs. Depends on how you want to look at it. Whoever is coming to this island next, they're gonna wish they had the others back. We were scientists and humanitarians compared to what kind of animals are coming next. People are really getting hurt now and things are being done that cannot ever be undone. The survival of the island is now at stake.